I want to talk about progesterone, the forgotten hormone in men. We associate progesterone with women problems, menopause, menstrual cycle. What does progesterone do in men? Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of progesterone in men, especially as it's a precursor for testosterone. What's interesting about progesterone is it helps maintain normal testosterone levels. Progesterone also decreases inflammation in the brain. It's an anti-inflammatory. It increases neurogenesis, which is the creation of new brain cells. Progesterone definitely helps protect against dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. Progesterone also has antidepressant effects as well. That's some of the effects that progesterone does on the brain. But when someone's younger, progesterone helps increase the production of sperm. Progesterone helps also maintain muscle mass. It's involved in the immune system. Progesterone also helps to maintain the prostate and to prevent the enlargement of the prostate. In fact, the drug called finasteride is a synthetic derivative of progesterone. One of the things that that drug, as well as progesterone does, is it inhibits the enzyme that's involved in the conversion from testosterone to something called DHT, which is a more powerful form of testosterone, which can then increase the size of the prostate. This drug will inhibit that enzyme to help shrink the prostate, but progesterone does it also in a very natural way without the side effects. Another thing that progesterone does is it helps reduce the risk of breast tissue in men. How do we end up with low progesterone and how do we increase the normal amounts of progesterone so then we can have more testosterone and other related hormones? All of these steroid hormones come from this raw material called cholesterol. And this is why cholesterol is so important, especially in hormones. A lot of people are on a statin drug, which automatically shuts off your ability to make all of these really important hormones. Let's just start at that level. And then we're going to kind of work our way down to see how we can improve this whole pathway. Where do you get cholesterol from? You're going to get a good amount of cholesterol in sardines, organ meats like liver, and you get some cholesterol in fatty meat. You can also get uh, cholesterol from cheese, but not the low fat cheese. You want to get the whole milk cheese. Then cholesterol is then turned into what's called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is a happy hormone because it actually helps increase other hormones. The question is, should you start taking pregnenolone? Not right away. I wouldn't recommend just jumping and taking it. If you were to take pregnenolone as a supplement, and you can get it over the counter, it's very easy to get, but pregnenolone is the precursor that comes right before progesterone. I would always recommend starting out maybe five to 10 milligrams only. That's very, very small. You might not need that, but I'm just putting it out there. If you try the cofactors and it's still not working, maybe you add that a little later. There are three cofactors that allow you to go from cholesterol to pregnenolone. Number one is magnesium. People are commonly deficient in magnesium. A problem with low testosterone could be easily solved just by taking enough magnesium. The type of magnesium I'd recommend is magnesium glycinate. I would recommend taking that before you go to bed, which will then open the door to allow this whole cascade of hormones to work. Magnesium, you can get in avocados, leafy greens, pumpkin seeds, dark chocolate. The next cofactor is zinc. Many people increase their testosterone levels just by taking zinc. Zinc, you can get in shellfish, oysters, red meat. And the last cofactor is vitamin B3, niacin. You can get that from nutritional yeast. You can take that as a supplement. Take the niacin that gives you the flush. It can help your heart. I've given you a couple things to increase this biochemical pathway. I do want to touch on things that can inhibit this biochemical pathway at different points. I already mentioned the one statin. Statin is just like notoriously bad for blocking hormones, okay? Because it blocks the raw material to make it. If you're on a statin or your doctor wants to put you on a statin, I would step back and reevaluate why do you really need that? There are a lot of cardiologists that you can even work with. They're very much against statin drugs. If you wanted to balance out your lipid profile, your cholesterol, there's a lot of other ways to do it. One way is just to cut down on the refined carbohydrates and sugar. Unfortunately, the medical profession doesn't focus on that. Instead, they give you a medication to block cholesterol. You better be taking coenzyme Q10. Very, 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 very important because if you don't, you're going to get problems with your muscle because that's one of the big side effects is it depletes something called coenzyme Q10. There are three other things that will inhibit this whole process. Number one is chronic stress. How do we lower stress? Ashwagandha, vitamin B1. One of the biggest things that can lower stress is by 
increasing something called oxytocin by taking a certain fermented microbe, which can build up your oxytocin levels and greatly reduce your stress. The next thing that can actually shut down this whole pathway is insulin. This comes from consuming too many refined carbs or sugars. Third thing, endocrine disruptors, things in the environment, plastics, chemicals, heavy metals are things that mimic estrogen. There's a couple things to help reduce some of these estrogenic effects. One is to, on a regular basis, consume cruciferous vegetables, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, arugula. Also to get a water filter that will screen out some of these plastics. And that was number three. There's actually number four. Alcohol will really shut down your testosterone. I'm sorry. I'm just the messenger. Don't click off. I'm not quite done yet. And there's just one last thing that will shut down that whole pathway, and that is inflammation. A lot of the inflammation that happens in the body can be resolved by consuming enough vitamin D. Vitamin D can indirectly increase both progesterone and testosterone by decreasing inflammation. And you don't want to just take small amounts. You want to take at least 10 thousand I use every single day as a maintenance. And if you have low testosterone or low progesterone, we want to make sure we get enough sun to get the vitamin D or just take a supplement for that. About 20,000 I use of vitamin D3 every day. That's really only 40 minutes in the summer sun. Okay. It's not that much, but that vitamin D will be really crucial to drop inflammation through the body and allow these chemical pathways to work. In addition to just cholesterol, if you want to increase testosterone, you want to make sure that you have enough quality protein and red meat is at the top of the list. I'm talking about grass-fed, grass-finished red meat. I'm not just talking about beef. You can do lamb. If we combine that with another thing that will increase testosterone, which is high-intensity interval training or resistance training, a couple times a week, we can really add the stimulus to tell the body to make more testosterone. One point with exercise as well, overtraining. If you overtrain, you're gonna take your testosterone and just drive it right into the ground. Why? Because you increase cortisol. We wanna do intermittent type workouts. Uh, you can do long walks, things like that. You don't wanna do moderate pulse rate or high pulse rate for a longer period of time. Not good for testosterone. I hope you know a little bit more about progesterone, what it does, how it's related to testosterone, and if you're a man, how to increase it a bit more. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.